Good evening, dear friends. Noise in the ears. If you're bothered by it, or if you're not bothered because you have become accustomed to it, but still want to get rid of it, or have started to hear poorly, or think that this will happen to you in the future and want some prevention, here you go, please. I will show you effective methods that I myself used in my practice, which gave results. So, to understand how to remove the noise, we first need to understand what to act on. The causes of noise are different, but today we will talk about the most common ones and those that we can successfully deal with. With this amazingly realistic illustration of a human ear, as you've noticed, and the vessels that supply blood to the structure of our auditory apparatus, internal, external, sound receiving, sound producing, I've lovingly depicted not only the external ear, our cochlea, as it's called, like a shell, but also look here how interestingly our ear is supplied with blood. Because one of the main reasons is the disruption of blood supply to our ear, not the external one, but the one that is inside. Because we have an external ear, a middle ear, and an inner ear. There is a sound-conducting, sound-receiving apparatus. And the problems that arise with your hearing, they are often related to a violation of the conduction of the nerve impulse along our auditory nerve. The vessels also participate here. You are already familiar with the vertebral arteries. There are two of them, right and left. They unite in the base of the skull into the basilar artery. And from this artery comes the cerebral artery. Not just the cerebral artery, but the anterior lower cerebral artery. And from it, in turn, like rivers, you see, like the Volga Mother River flows. And from it, some smaller river flows, like Civil or Sura. That's how they are. Here is a similar situation. The anterior lower cerebellar artery flows from the basilar artery, which formed in the skull at the junction of the common vertebral arteries. And already from this anterior lower cerebellar artery, we have a labyrinthine artery branching off, which in turn divides into branches, and they supply blood to the entire structure of our sound receiving apparatus. It supplies blood. There are branches, such branches of the very artery that supply blood to our organ of balance, semicircular canals that supply blood to the auditory nerve itself and the cochlea. This organ of ours, which mainly participates in making the sound come to you. And then it reaches your brain and you understand what you heard. You won't hear that the dinner's ready without it or a message saying you got your salary or pension, or on the contrary, that it's been taken off by your bank. You can't transfer money to a safe account. Remember this, don't give in to scammers. So, what we have here, it supplies blood to this whole apparatus of ours, the auditory nerve, the cochlea, the labyrinthine artery, and what problems can there be here? The first is turbulent vortices in the path of the blood flow. This is atherosclerosis. With atherosclerosis, I can't help you. But there are also mechanical problems when our spinal artery collapses or when we have a venous stasis. And due to blood filling, there is also a violation of venous outflow in all these structures. Now, how can we determine whether we can affect the noise and improve hearing, and how successful will this be? The first positive sign for you indicating that the noise can be removed is that it changes, firstly, from the position of the head. Let's do a test. Put aside the spoon, fork, cup. Turn your head and let's begin the test. You turn your head to one side and see if the noise has increased or decreased. Turn to the other side. Does it change somehow or not? Tilt your head forward and back. And if it changes because of the position of your head, that's good. That's a good sign. 
it means you can get rid of it. A full set of exercises, diagnostics, and recovery of your body and your muscles is now available specifically for you at the link right here in the description. What goes in there? All exercises go in there, starting from the very tip of your hair, ending with your toes. All exercises are broken down step by step for all muscles. How to train muscles, how to find out which ones work, which ones don't, changing the motor stereotype, how to learn to walk, stand, lie, sit correctly. All exercises are thoroughly explained. For three years, they all gathered together, and now they are finally ready for you to get off the couch and start doing them. They are already waiting for you, warm and cozy, in the link description. Now, open and close your mouth, clenching your teeth hard, and see if it changes or not. Try different combinations. Open your mouth, close it, turn your head. Clench your teeth, then unclench them. If there are changes, it's very good. Your noise will decrease. The noise itself can be of several types. Two types, high frequency and low frequency. High frequencies are like a mosquito squeaking. Low frequencies are like the Volga mother riven humming or the wind going across the field rye and wheat, rustling the crops. That's a low frequency noise. Both should be dealt with, but the low frequency noise is easier to treat because as a rule, it is directly related to the turbulence of the flow and when we restore it, it gets better faster. But if there's a low frequency noise, it means that there's already a bit of a problem with the sound receiving device with the auditory nerve, but it can still be improved. And there's another test to determine whether it's related to a blood flow disorder or not. Here's what you do. You tilt your head down and watch how the noise behaves. Does it get louder or quieter? If it gets louder, it means there's a venous outflow disorder. If the flow decreases or if it doesn't change, well, what can I say? So, friends, I see you've admired this beautifully drawn ear. I agree, but don't get lost in admiration of the picture. Let's move on to the exercises. So, what has actually given results in my experience? I'm only telling you about my practice. First, it's the impact on the neck muscles. Which ones exactly? First and foremost, on the scalene muscle, there seems to be no direct connection where the vertebral artery is located in the vertebral canal. Yes, right here, and where the scalene muscles do not touch directly. But specifically when acting on the scalene muscle, many times there was such an effect that the noise went away. Not only did I notice this, but also from the experience of other specialists, there is such a result. How to act on it. The scalene muscle is located there. If you will search for it yourself, it's behind the sternocleidomastoid muscle, thick enough and painful at the start. You need to learn to massage it with your hands. And there is not just one muscle. In the company, there are two more scalene muscles. They have their own vibe there. A vascular nerve bundle passes between them. And here are the anterior scalene muscles, the middle and the posterior ones. And you need the anterior and middle ones, but when you will massage it, you will get to all of them, both the anterior and the middle ones. So, your task is to slightly turn the head, find the sternocleidomastoid muscle, find the posterior edge, find such a dense area of tension. This will be the scalene muscle and you work out all this part, just massage it. First, you massage it like this, and then down here, make an up and down movement. You are working out the fascia of this muscle, and then vice versa. It is also present on the other side, not only on one side, and then up, down, up. You can also do this in different positions, slightly forward, slightly back. You ensure and restore the mobility of the fascia, so you can work out this pained area with the other hand. 
After this, you will be surprised that the head has moved from this position to a more upright position. This is because the muscles have relaxed. It's easier to hold the head on the shoulders. Look forward instead of down at the ground. To the future. That was our scalene muscle. Try this exercise. Some of you will notice the noise has already changed. Write in the comments how much. Tell us in decibels, the exact figure, how much it has changed for you after you have done this procedure. By the way, the most interesting thing, what is that noise? What is it, in general? What's exactly causing this noise? Here are two options. The first, as you already remember, we just said it. It's a whirl, a turbulent flow of blood. Here's an artery, and here's extravalvular compression. Or, for example, inside, there's an atherosclerotic plaque, and the blood flow is non-laminar, not smooth, but turbulent. Some kind of whirls are formed here, right? And this noise is transmitted to your ear so you can hear it. It's more like it's in your head. And the second is the distortion of sound or loss of hearing of certain frequencies. For example, you decided to listen to the radio, your favorite radio. Which one do you listen to? Countryside radio. You listen to it when you take a ride to plant some crops. Or let's say energy radio when you do your morning run that you do every day. So let's say you are looking on your radio receiver and you can't find the songs on that frequency where your favorite broadcast used to be. There's just noise there now. The same thing that is, there are certain sound frequencies, hertz, megahertz, kilowatts. It doesn't matter. Let's say your radio is 93.5 FM. You used to receive this frequency well with your sound receiving device, and now it's lost. And instead of it, you hear noise. Instead of clear sounds of music of your favorite singer, like Mozart, you will hear only noise. And when you restore the nerve conduction, your violin will sing again, you will dance again in the mornings. Do morning gymnastics. Okay, we got carried away with theory, but now let's get back to practice. What's next for us? That was our scalene muscle. Now, the chewing muscles also play a big role. The temporomandibular joint. It is formed not only by the lower jaw, but also by the temporal bone. And inside the temporal bone is where all this is located. The auditory nerves, the cochlea, the semicircular canals, and the labyrinthine artery itself. All of it is there. And therefore, the temporomandibular joints also sometimes have an effect on the noise. What to do with this? Temporal and masticatory muscles are right here. Here we have the masticatory muscle. Your task is to first find the painful parts on this muscle and work on them. Here we have the scapula at the high bone. Here we have the scapula bone. And right under it, right here, you massage this entire muscle. First, find the pained parts there, and then you can also work on it at different angles. A little like this, slightly forward backward. Press on the muscle a bit and lead it down like this, as if you're smoothing it out. In this way, you work out the fascia. Do it also between the muscle fibers, across the muscle fibers. All these places can also be worked out with circular movements. Work out all of that. You also deal with the temporalis muscle. Here it is. It also participates in the movement of the temporomandibular joints. You also work it out. Divide it into three parts for convenience. Back, middle, front. Work each of them out precisely. For example, by the movements following these fibers. From top to bottom, from bottom. So that your tissues work better. All this will ensure a reduction in fascial tension for you. When the fascia is stretched, it creates a condition for compression, primarily of the venous lymphatic vessels. You will ensure the restoration of all this. That is, the effect on the temporalis muscle and the effect on the chewing muscle. So we do all this, we work it out. If it helps you, write about it in the comments. Don't forget. Don't get distracted by the fact that you started to hear better and indicate the results in the comments. 
And the third one. That's really interesting. The auditory passage itself often loses its mobility, and we need to restore it. That is, we cannot act directly on the very internal structures of the ear, but we can indirectly affect them. For this, you take the ear itself like this and pull it to the side. And your task is to slightly pull this outer auditory passage forward. In other words, mobilize it to move in all directions. That is, you pull yourself by the ear, pull the middle part. Pull, relax, pull, relax. Then pull by the earlobe. Pull, relax. Then pull to the side like this. The ears do not enlarge from this, don't worry. Now you also pull the upper part. Now look, this simple movement will not cause you any problems, right? Because it's clear how to do it. But now the more complicated part is this part of the ear, right here, right above. Above the lobe there is such a cartilaginous part, here it is. Grab it. Similarly, now your task is to move this part up down, up down. When we talk and chew this part of the ear, it should be moving. Due to this, a good blood circulation is possible. But it happens that the mobility is lost. You see how the ear should move? Up and down. You push out this auditory passage. Now look, take for example, the earlobe or the middle part of the ear, whatever is more comfortable for you. At the same time, move it up and down. That is, you also move this inner part. Can you see it? So you move this part up, down, up, down. And in this way, you make all these internal ear structures move, which often lose mobility. It often shrinks, fibrosis, blood supply decreases, edema forms. So friends, we already perceive the sound more clearly with you, yes? You don't have to read my lips anymore. You are now hearing freely, with pleasure, listening to me with both ears. So, what do you need to do now? These exercises. Do sports help you parents? Until new broadcasts. Give your thumbs up and leave comments.